The third worksheet you'll complete for major assignment two is the credit cards sheet. On this sheet, you're going to start with a certain balance, assuming a particular APR with monthly compounding and a fixed minimum payment amount and maximum uh, percentage applied to the current balance, you'll determine how long it takes to pay off that credit card balance, assuming no new additional charges in the meantime. And then you'll add some summary information about the amounts that you've paid. So here, we're given a problem. This will, again, depend on your name in section five, and we'll first need to transfer the inputs to our fields here. So we just read those off here. We have a $2,150 credit card. That's our starting balance. We enter that in here. The APR is 20%. We enter that here. Number of payments per year, it's monthly. So we have 12 payments per year. And then we're given that the percentage of current balance is 2.5% and the fixed minimum is $25. If we'd like, we could also format items here. Formatting is indicated over at the right here percentages will be percentage with two decimals. So we'll need to increase the decimal place there. Our starting balance and fixed minimum are formatted as currency with two decimal places. Here is um, a good trick. If you press the control key, then just like in other Microsoft applications, if you're using Windows, you can select two non-contiguous items. So we can actually select the starting balance and fixed minimum without selecting in between cells. We can then select currency and it'll apply it to both of those. And then the payments per year um, will need to change from general to number with zero decimals. And we've seen how to do that by using the decrease decimal button twice. Next, with our inputs, we'll now start on our amortization table where we'll calculate how much we'll pay each month and then how much the current balance is from month to month. There's a note about the payment amount, and let me scroll down to that briefly. That's provided here. The amount that you pay at the start of the month is the larger of your fixed minimum payment and the percentage of the current balance. So here, we're going to take 2.5% of the current balance. If that is larger than the fixed minimum, we'll use that. If it's smaller, then we use the fixed minimum. And then once we get below the fixed minimum, our last payment will be the final current balance. Now we can combine that information into a single function here. Let me demonstrate this one here. So we're going to take the maximum of the percentage of the current balance, so the percentage applied to the current balance and the fixed minimum payment. In this case, we see that the percentage is gonna be the larger one. We have an amount larger than $25. Here, because we want to be able to copy this formula down, this is going to apply going forward, we also want to use fixed cell references 
for the percentage and the fixed minimum. We can do that by editing and we can edit in the formula bar by clicking in that bar directly using the dollar sign for a fixed row reference. That means that when we move the formula up and down, we copy it, uh, that reference won't change. So if we make those two fixed, then as we copy this down, we'll get appropriate cell references there. For the other items here, take a look at the resources. The balance after payment is going to be the current balance minus the payment amount. The interest will be the interest on the current, on the balance after payment. So you apply the payment and then you add interest based on the balance after that payment has been made. That interest is based on the APR, and we divide the APR by 12 in order to get a monthly rate. And then the current balance for the next month is the balance after payment plus the interest. So our first set of calculations might look something like this. For the interest payment, incidentally, I won't click on the cell there, but for that payment, you'll also want to use fixed cell references if you're interested in copying your formula down to other cells in the column. I'll go ahead and fill in some more values here. I'll also format the payment and then we'll talk about how to continue there. Okay, this view shows the table with more values filled in. As we scroll down, notice that the current balance in column B, of course, is decreasing, but the payment amount is also decreasing because it's based on the current balance and the interest amount in column E is decreasing as well. Now, if we go down far enough, we'll see that we get to this point here where we now hit our minimum payment amount, our fixed payment, and then we stay at that level. This is what this max function does for us. At this point, the interest rate times the current balance is less than $25. And so from there on down, we continue to use $25 until we hit the last value in the table. Finally, this view shows that once we get to the bottom, we finally drop here below $25 and at this point, we simply use that final payment. Note that your final entry in, in our case, it's cell C176. In your case, it's going to be different. Is going to be equal to the value of the final balance. And you'll want to use a formula referencing that balance rather than a hard-coded value. For these values, of the fixed minimum, you're also going to need formulas. So to recap, we entered the different monthly payment, balance after payment, interest, and then the next month's current balance. And we just continued that down until we paid off our credit card loan. Here, Notice that our final payment is made in month 152, and this is cell A176. We're going to need that when we fill in our summary section. In this view, I've scrolled back up, and we're now looking at the summary section 5C. Our number of years to pay off because we're making monthly payments is going to be the number of payments divided by 
the number of payments per year. Here, make sure that you use cell references for both the numerator and denominator. For the total amount paid, we can add up all of the values in the payment column C. And then the total interest paid can either be the total of the interest payments in column E, or we can take the total amount paid and subtract the current balance for our loan. Those should match. After formatting, your summary section might look something like this. Again, it makes sense to look at the reasonableness of your answers. The total amount paid here is more than twice the balance that you started with, but we had a pretty high APR, and so that's reasonable. We look at the current balance plus the interest paid. That's about the total amount. That's correct. So this looks good. We also um, have formatted all of the entries in the amortization table in 5B as currency with two decimals. That concludes the credit cards section. And you'll have just the annual budget worksheet to complete next.